Have you ever wanted a super sense? Like, say, X-ray vision? Discover that some animals already have superpowers of perception. As we count down the top 10 super senses in the animal kingdom. You don't have to be a psychic to know what happens when the senses are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. About three quarters of our perceptions of the world around us come through our eyes. So when the sun goes down and we lose input from our primary sense, our imagination can run wild. It takes a super sense to be at home in the darkness. And that's why the Tarsier is number 10 in the countdown. This pocket-sized primate lives on islands in Southeast Asia, and its amazing eyes give it a truly super sense. When you want to see in the dark, size is everything, because the bigger your eyes, the more photons of light you can let in. The Tarsier has the biggest eyes in the world in proportion to its body size. It's the only animal in the world that literally has eyes bigger than its stomach. On the darkest nights, when you can't see your hand in front of your face, a tarsier can pinpoint an insect six meters away, and it can even accurately judge the distance between itself and its prey. Tarsiers see so well in the dark that they can leap more than 20 times their body length and land with pinpoint accuracy. That would be like a human jumping across a tennis court in complete darkness and landing on a dime. Of course, we'd look a little different if our eyes were proportionately the same size as a tarsier's. Imagine how much better we could see in the dark if we had eyes the size of melons. Fortunately, our normal sized eyes do help us see in the dark. In low light levels, our pupils open wide to let in the maximum amount of light, just like a tarsier. But as any photographer knows, big pupils can cause big problems. We've all seen photographs of people with spooky red eyes. That's because the camera flash has reflected off the red blood vessels feeding the back of the eyeball. So some cameras have a red eye reduction feature where the flash goes off twice. The first flash causes the pupils to contract. The actual photograph is taken on the second flash when the pupils are small. So there's no red eye reflection in the picture. There are other ways of fooling your senses. Here at the Oasis Day Spa in New York City, people like Marty Sykes can step out of their senses by stepping into a flotation tank. Hey okay, Marty, is this your first time floating with us? I know I've floated with you guys before. Okay, basically this is our float room and... You can lose your sense of sight, sound, touch, and even gravity 
by stepping into a bath containing 300 kilograms of Epsom salts dissolved in water heated to skin temperature. Enjoy your experience. The super saline solution in the flotation tank has such a high density that your body floats like a cork on the surface. Freed from gravity in a soundproof and lightproof tank, it feels like you're floating in space. And since your brain no longer has to process input from your senses, it's free to expand in other areas. My mind feels like it moves really, really fast when I'm floating in the tank. I get all sorts of thoughts, like, um, Oh, I've got to feed the cat today, and then breathe, 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 that kind of thing. It's, it's, it could fire from anywhere. I almost feel like with the loss of some senses, like I gain others. In my head, my heartbeat sounds so much louder than it does. That's almost all that I can hear. A tarsier wouldn't see the sense in a flotation tank. With its incredible night vision, just turning out the lights isn't going to stop it from being one jump ahead of the rest of the jungle. When it comes to the sense of touch, our next contender is a cut above the rest. Even though it lives beneath our feet. Burrowing in to number nine in the countdown is the mole. In these dark tunnels, it has a super sense of touch thanks to its incredible nose. The mole's snout is covered in more than 2,000 touch receptors that can detect the tiny vibrations in the soil made by its slimy prey. Recently, scientists discovered that moles actually have erectile noses. Underneath those touch receptors is an extensive system of blood vessels. When the mole gets excited, the vessels fill with blood pushing up the touch receptors to get a better feel of its surroundings. Humans also have erectile tissue in the nose, but it's another organ that has most of our touch receptors. The skin is our largest sense organ and is covered with about 5 million touch receptors spread all over the body. Touch can even be therapeutic. Doctors from the Touch Research Institute in Miami, working with premature babies, discovered that infants massaged three times a day grew 47% faster than those that didn't get touched. Because we rely on our eyes for most of our sensory input, we often forget just how important the sense of touch can be. The touch receptors in our skin can provide information about things like pressure, heat, cold, and pain. Touch receptors collect information and fire it along nerves up to the sensory cortex of the brain. Scientists have been able to map which areas of the brain receive information from the body. Because our touch receptors are concentrated in some areas more than others, different amounts of the brain are devoted to our body's sense of touch. We'd look very different if you made a model of our body in proportion to the amount of brain power dedicated to the touch receptors. We'd have enormous lips, tongue, and fingertips because these are some of the most touch-sensitive parts of the body. If you think that human looked weird, just wait until you see the mole with the most extreme sense of touch on the planet. This is the star-nosed mole. Those strange tentacles on its nose are covered in touch receptors. It has six times the sensitivity of the entire human hand concentrated into that tiny pink snout.
there are an incredible 100,000 nerve fibers running into that star-shaped nose, which is why some researchers believe that this mole has the best sense of touch of any animal on the planet. So far, we've been touched by two really good-looking contenders. But still to come, there's an animal that can see things invisible to the human eye. And what animal bathes in mud, but still has better taste than most humans? Find out next on The Most Extreme. The next contender in our countdown of super senses has something of an image problem. Don't go thinking that pigs are just dirty swine. Their name's been dragged through the mud because people see them as examples of humanity's deadliest sins. Pigs are said to be filthy, lazy, and of course, greedy. But don't let their table manners fool you. Pigs are number eight in the countdown because they have a super sense of taste. In one study, pigs rejected 171 out of 200 vegetables offered to them because they're actually extremely fussy eaters. A pig's tongue is covered with about 20,000 taste buds. That can be three times the number found on a human tongue. But not all tongues are the same. It seems that some people really do have better taste than others. Scientists at Yale University use blue food coloring to help see the number of taste buds on the tongue. They discovered that 25% of humans are actually super tasters. They have tongues packed with more of the pinhead-like structures that house the taste buds. The difference between a super taster and a normal tongue is obvious. Being a super taster is like living in a taste world of neon colors instead of pastels. While sweets are twice as sweet, some foods like broccoli can taste very bitter. That's why super tasters and pigs have a lot in common. Thanks to their super sense, they're both very fussy eaters. So next time you meet a child who refuses to eat broccoli, remember that it's probably just being a little pig-headed. So far, we've tasted with pigs, touched on moles, and looked over tarsiers. But coming up, to have a sense of smell as powerful as our next contender, you need a really big nose. That's next on The Most Extreme. In the fight against crime, the next contender in our countdown of super senses is a head by a nose. Dogs are number seven in the countdown because of their extreme sense of smell. They're perhaps 100,000 times better at picking up odors than we are. Compared to dogs, our noses really are pathetic. <laughs> That's because when it comes to smell, in the back of our nose, there are about 40 million smell receptors, covering an area of about 13 square centimeters. If we wanted to smell things as well as a dog, we'd need a much bigger nose. The dog's huge snout has much more room for the receptor cells. A German Shepherd can have two billion smell receptors covering an area ten times larger than our nose. 
dogs are number seven in the countdown because they build up a sense of the world around them using an olfactory bulb in their brain four times larger than found in humans. No wonder we've used their incredible noses to sniff out drugs and smell gas leaks in pipelines buried far below the ground. And now there's even a dog that can sniff out cancer. Doctors usually rely on visual identification of skin cancers. It's a tricky business, and one in five melanomas are not discovered in time to successfully treat the patient. But now, there's another way. This is George the Schnauzer. He was trained to retrieve melanoma samples hidden in test tubes. Then it was time to meet real patients at the Tallahassee Memorial Hospital. Using a special examining table, George correctly identified melanomas on six of seven patients. In one case, George pointed out a mole that had previously been ignored by three different doctors. When the lesion was sent to the pathology lab, the results showed that it was in fact a melanoma. Doctors believe that if the mole had remained undetected, the patient could have very well died from skin cancer. George may have a truly miraculous nose, but there is another animal with such a super sense of smell that it's leapt in to number six in the countdown. When humans go looking for love, our senses can sometimes lead us astray. Some animals are much better at tracking true love. Our next contender can use a super sense to sniff out a mate 10 kilometers away through the thickest forest. Coming in at number six in the countdown is the moth. This fertile female moon moth is looking for love in the forests of the eastern United States. That's why she's releasing a stream of chemicals into the night air. These pheromones are a chemical come hither for any male in the neighborhood. A male moth needs a truly super sense to pick up the trail because the female only produces a fraction of a milligram of pheromone. By the time her perfume has drifted downwind, the scent concentrations are incredibly small. And that's why male moths are number six in the countdown. Their antenna are covered with up to 40,000 scent detector cells. And these cells detect only one chemical, the molecules of the female's perfume. Male moths are so sensitive that in one experiment, a caged female attracted 127 males from up to three kilometers away in just three hours. It's a happy ending for the moths, but for some humans, life's not always a bed of roses. Meet Jill Murray. Thanks to damage caused by a bout of influenza, she completely lost her sense of smell and that's why she went to the Taste and Smell Clinic in Washington, D.C. Miss Murray, you want to come? For more than 30 years, Dr. Robert Hankin has been interviewing patients with similar problems. I had a question. Have you ever had a problem with your smell? Is it present now? And how long has it been there? And we found out that 7% of people had some problem with smell, particularly loss. And if we extrapolated that to the population of the United States, that means about 19 million people have this problem. And it's a problem with some serious side effects. Great. Tasting food, smelling flowers, that's a quality of life, enjoyment of life issue. But when you talk about not being able to smell smoke or gasoline or fumes, then it's, that's actually dangerous. With the help of Dr. Henkin, drug therapy, and electrophysiological techniques, people like Jill can once again start waking up to smell the coffee.
If a male moon moth lost his super sense of smell, he'd become a bachelor for life. Love may be blind, but for these animals, love can also really stink. The moth's super sense of smell is certainly nothing to sniff at, but it's still only number six in the countdown. Because coming up, the plains of Africa are buzzing about an animal that can detect sound waves through its feet. That's next on The Most Extreme. It's not surprising that the next contender in the countdown has a super sense of hearing. After all, the biggest ears in the world belong to the elephant. We all know that elephants are noisy. It's hard to miss their trumpets and growls. But elephants are number five in the countdown because they make three times as many calls as we think. It's just that we can't hear them. When we listen to the calls of an elephant, we can only pick up a limited range of sound frequencies. Elephants can communicate using low frequency vibrations formed when air is passed through their nasal cavities. Sounds below human hearing are called infrasound. We can only listen to the calls when the recording is played back at 10 times normal speed. Being able to use infrasound has a huge advantage. When elephants call using frequencies we can hear, the sound waves are quickly scattered by anything that gets in the way. But infrasound waves bend around objects with very little scattering. That's why in good conditions, elephants using infrasound can be heard up to 10 kilometers away. Recent research has also found that elephants can pick up good vibrations through their feet. It seems that low frequency rumbling and foot stomping generate seismic waves in the ground that can travel up to 30 kilometers along the surface of the earth. Elephants can sense these vibrations through nerve endings in their sponge-like feet. Elephants are not the only animals that feel sounds. Some humans can feel sounds, smell colors, or see a taste. About one in every 25,000 people in the world suffer from some form of synesthesia, a condition where the senses fuse together into strange combinations. Sufferers can feel a smell. Others can smell a sound. Some scientists believe that this condition may be caused by a malfunction in the processing centers of the brain. The five senses are jumbled together. Some musicians have the most common form of synesthesia. They hear musical notes as colors. Mozart often described D major as a sunny yellow key. B minor was black and A was red. Like Mozart, Elephants also have good control of their wind instruments. And when these guys get together for a concert, it's just a shame that our humble senses mean that we'll never get to hear the elephant's wonderful bass line.
swimming in to number four in the countdown is the dolphin. Dolphins have a super sense of hearing that can detect sounds far beyond our audible range. Dolphins can make a complex series of clicks and whistles in the air sacs below the blowhole. But the vast majority of these sounds are too high pitched for us to hear. If you swim in front of a dolphin, you can sometimes feel intense vibrations through your body. That's because each dolphin is hitting you with high frequency pulses of ultrasound. By listening to the echoes of these sound waves, dolphins can build up a picture of the world around them. A dolphin uses a large fatty organ in its forehead to transmit a beam of the ultrasonic pulses, much like a submarine uses sonar. Like sonar pings, the sound waves will bounce back off the diver. The beauty of ultrasound is that some of the ultrasonic waves can pass right through the skin. The beam may then reflect back off the bones or internal organs, resulting in a number of different echoes. Some scientists believe that these echoes are processed in the dolphin's brain to form a 3D image of the diver. We've been able to eavesdrop on the dolphin's ultrasonic communication for some time now, thanks to specialized auditory equipment. But recently, at the Holosonic Research Labs in Massachusetts, one man has found a way to use ultrasonics to steer sound. Get ready to throw away your headphones once you hear Joe Pompey's audio spotlight. The audio spotlight makes a very directive beam of sound that acts much like a beam of light. This device has a laser pointer in the center to allow you to see where the sound is going. As I move the spotlight across the camera, it gets very loud and then quiet again. And if I go back, you only hear the sound when the spotlight's aimed right at you. Pompey's disc is actually a high frequency loudspeaker. It fires carefully selected wavelengths of ultrasound into the air like a searchlight. The column of air particles actually works to convert the high frequency waves into sounds we can hear. Focus the spotlight on someone's head and you can beam them their own personal music. Dolphins have another use for their ultrasonic beams. Their sonar is capable of detecting fish buried a meter deep in sand. That's a supersensory ability that not even the most sophisticated human sonar system can match. So far, we've been counting down the animals that have taken our five senses to the extreme. But coming up is a no-nonsense predator that uses infrared imaging to hunt down its prey. That's next on The Most Extreme. Our countdown of super senses continues in Egypt, home of one of the deadliest animals in the world. It's said that music soothes the savage beast, so it's a real shame that our next contender is deaf. The snake can't hear sounds in the air. It can only feel vibrations in the ground. So when a snake dances, it's not moving to the music, 
but following the movements of the snake charmer's flute. Being tone deaf is no handicap for snakes. Who needs ears when you hunt with very different super senses? In some parts of the U.S., you can find a snake that makes its own music. The rattlesnake only uses its rattle to scare away intruders. Because when it's out hunting, it's a silent killer. It may not be able to hear the mouse, but it can certainly taste its presence. That forked tongue is actually tasting the air. It's transferring tiny particles of mouse scent to a special sense organ on the roof of its mouth. The fork design allows the snake to detect which side the smell is strongest so it can home in on its prey. But snakes are number three in the countdown because they also have a sixth sense. This green tree python can sense wavelengths of light that are invisible to us. The snake is equipped with built-in infrared sensors tucked into pits along its lips. These let it see wavelengths of light that we can only feel as heat. This means the snake can track its prey using the animal's body heat. It targets using both a visual and thermal image. How would you like a super sense that lets you see in the dark? Visit the counter spy shop in New York City and you'll find enough high-tech sensory equipment to make a snake jealous. In these times of heightened security, clients seeking discreet surveillance can bring the world of James Bond into their own home. Cameras can be disguised as office or home equipment. How would you like a video briefcase? And now you can see like a snake. Night vision goggles capture the same infrared light seen by snakes. Hot objects, like warm bodies, emit more infrared light than cool objects, like buildings or trees. Having night vision goggles built into their lips means snakes are well equipped to hunt both above and below ground. Snakes may have a truly frightening array of sensory equipment, but our next contender can see things no one else can. The next contender can be found in tropical waters around the world. Meet the mantis shrimp. It's number two in the countdown because it has the most amazing eyes on the planet, as Dr. Shane Ayong from the Australian Museum explains. Vision in the mantis shrimp is um extraordinarily developed. Each eye is constructed in such a way that it has binocular vision. So if it loses an eye, it can still see with binocular vision. It's so good that they seem to be able to recognize individuals. They seem to recognize the person who feeds them and the person who, who they've never seen before. The mantis shrimp is number two in the countdown because its eyes have 16 visual pigments compared to our three. And that's how it can scan for all colors, including ultraviolet and polarized light invisible to us. And when it detects something edible, it lines up those scanning lines like the crosshairs of a gun sight. So why does the shrimp need such extreme vision? When we watch the shrimp hunting, 
Our massive brains are processing the information and building up our mental picture of the scene. In the mantis shrimp, however, all that processing of visual information occurs inside the eye itself because the shrimp's brain is just too small to cope. Imagine if you could see like a mantis shrimp. Today, you don't need eye drops to see the unbelievable. All it takes is a visit to Guy Coggins at San Francisco's Aura Imaging Systems. Guy's developed an optical electrical system that he claims lets you see your own aura, the radiance from the energy field that supposedly emanates from all living things. I'm going to show you the sensor box, which actually measures the electrical field from many different acupuncture points simultaneously, plus temperature and a few other things. So you can just go ahead and place your hand in the box. And these colors will be reflected around you as light and color. In just a second, you're sort of stabilized, and you've got your greens here. Your greens seem to be your resonant color, and green would be the color that you'd be almost all the time, unless you went through some tremendous change. Green is persistence, self-assertion, self-esteem, um, healing, stick to it, it is hard working, and you have uh, some yellow coming up here for um, intellectual capacity, and you've got the blue on this side, which is um, clear communication, and that part of you is which is being expressed at this point. Your red people tend to be incredibly active, sports-minded. Your yellower people tend to be a little bit more intellectual. Greens were the hard-working, the pillars of society. Your blue regions, um, they're a little bit more etherical. The purples tend to be sort of out on the edge, a little spacey. Comet. Okay, now we're going to take Comet's aura photo. So you just put, just put Comet over there and have his paws on the special doggy sensor. And we'll take his picture in just a second. Okay, Comet, we'll take your picture. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. Okay, here's Comet's photo. Okay. Now that is a laid-back dog. <laughs> Just going. You don't see many blues and greens and whites. Who knows? If we had eyes like the mantis shrimp, maybe we could all see our auras. But not even the mantis shrimp could see the solution of our final puzzle. Just what is the animal with the most extreme senses in the countdown? We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best. Only one animal is a more extreme super sensing machine. It's number one, and it's coming up next on the most extreme. About 70% of our planet is covered in water. This is home to the animal with the most extreme senses in the countdown. To find food in this vast expanse of ocean, you need a super set of senses, especially if you're the most feared killer in the sea. Launching in to number one in the countdown is the shark. The shark may be the perfect killer, but what's the use of being armed to the teeth if you can't locate your prey? That's why the shark has such an array of super senses. Imagine if we had the senses of a shark. We'd have incredible hearing. How would you like to be able to hear your food cooking 1,500 meters away? 
your super sense of smell would let you track your food from nearly a kilometer. Your eyes would be 10 times more sensitive to light. And you'd have an unbelievably keen sense of touch. From a distance of 3 meters, you'd be able to detect enough vibrations to build up a three-dimensional picture of your lunch. Sharks have taken senses we know so well to the extreme, but that's not enough to make them number one in the countdown. After all, lots of animals have extraordinary senses of smell and sight. Sharks are special because they have a sixth sense. They can detect the tiny electrical fields generated by all living creatures every time they move a muscle. Sharks are so sensitive they can detect half a billionth of a volt. That's like detecting the electricity created by a flashlight battery from a distance of 1,500 kilometers. The sixth sense of the shark is thanks to a network of tiny voltmeters tucked into pits around its mouth. These cells give the shark the ability to locate prey in complete darkness or even when it's buried under sand. But could it be that sharks are not the only ones born with a sixth sense? Sonia Fitzpatrick seems to have one. She says she communicates with animals using the energy fields that surround every creature. There we go, sweetheart. She's traveled to Florida's Gatorland because Tim Williams contacted the pet psychic to help solve a mystery. This is my favorite alligator in the whole world. Come here, Pop. Here he comes. That's my boy. Oh, he's beautiful. Isn't he wonderful? The alligator called Pop used to be Tim's best friend, but recently something's happened to their relationship. Oh, he likes you a lot. You're a good old chap, God he's telling him. me. He says you're a good chap. He says you, you're always there, but he says you've been a bit sad recently. I just went through a breakup in my relationship. He said you still get sadness now. Well, I do now because he doesn't come over and work. When did you give him some sort of food that you're not giving him so often now? I used to feed him a lot of red meat. Yeah. And then we went to chickens. Why have you cut that red meat out, he wants to know. Uh, just availability. He's annoyed with you for that, and he wants more red meat, and he says he'll be working again like crazy if you give him plenty of red meat. Tim tried the new diet, and only four days later, Pop was back to his old self. But thanks to Sonia, things have changed between Tim and Pop. So the thing that really got me, I went through some personal family situation a couple of years ago, and I used to come out here and sit on the bank and talk to Pop. I think he was the only one that understood me. And she goes, he, he's telling me there was some sadness and some things in your life. I'm going, whoa, wait a minute. This is, uh, this is going a little too far. Plus, I asked Pop not to tell anybody. So now I know I can't trust him anymore. Perhaps only a shark could understand how a human sixth sense could work. Could it be that this extraordinary predator is so sensitive that it can detect more than just the electrical impulses generated every time we move a muscle? Our very thoughts are no more than electrochemical impulses. Perhaps that's why this shark knows the diver means it no harm and why it doesn't bite the hand that feeds it. After all, the shark possesses so many extraordinary senses that it's almost impossible for us to imagine how it perceives the world. Which is why there can be no doubt that when it comes to super senses, the shark really is the most extreme. <laughs>